So, welcome back. Today we are going to conduct a very interesting lab that is on anaglyph and uh, making of dam that is digital elevation model okay and it is going to help you a lot in extracting information about the objects on the surface of the earth okay and you can uh, conduct your uh, practical in a way to to map some area okay to 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 make 3d uh, images of that area in the form of anaglyph okay so in this way you can use a data from a satellite okay which you can use to make an anaglyph okay and dim of an area so today we are going to conduct this lab so the name of this lab is preparation of digital elevation model and anaglyph from cartosat 1 using nv software okay the version is 4.7 in this lab, what we basically do, we select a data of from the cortoset 1 and we first do the topographic analysis of that data. So, we first do the dam extraction, okay. In the dam extraction wizard, we can go and we can create some new image files. So, here in case of our data, we are having the image files in a directory which we have already placed on our desktop ok. So, in that directory you will find one forward image and another is an afterward image. So, you will select the forward and after image to create the stereo model and to create digital elevation model as well as your anaglyph which you can see with the help of this. 3D anaglyph glass ok. You know that this glass uh, whenever you go for a 3D movie in the theatre outside you will be given this type of glass ok. So, this is called 3D anaglyph glass. So, it has uh, on the left eye side it has some cyan or this uh, reddish color and on the right side it has bluish color ok. So, this class you will use after creation of the anaglyph through this exercise. So, first what we do, we select the topographic data from the dam extraction wizard ok and we select our files like this. So, from here there are two options, I, either you can select your files with this option open new file or you can also select your image files from the first window that is file. So, from the option of file you can also select your the forward and after image. So, then you will select first the forward image then the afterward image like this. So, this is band F, F means forward and A means afterward. So, band F and band A. So, this is these are the image files in the form of TIFF ok in this format. First you will over click on band F file and open. So, then you will go with the band A file, then again you click on the open. So, first I should share some uh, information on NV software, so that you have an idea that what we can do with this software ok. So, NV is actually a product family which provides a variety of software, solutions for processing and analyzing geospatial imagery used by scientists, researchers or maybe image analysts and these type of software help us in processing and doing the image analysis with some meaningful information 
from imagery okay so we can extract some meaningful information from our images so nv combines advanced spectral image processing and proven geospatial analysis technology with a modern user friendly interface so these are some advantages of the software which you can use and also you can use panchromatic lidar synthetic aperture radar multispectral or hyperspectral imagery with these softwares okay so with this software you can do the analysis of this much of data okay so now let us go ahead with this process of dam extraction and an glyph creation so first you will select f then you will select your after image okay then click open so here now you can see that the stereo pair images are having now band 1 and band 1 of forward and after both the images okay this this is for this is for forward and this is for after then here you will have some information about the type of these files like the type of files is stiff the resolution and the datum wgs 84 okay so these are some a type of uh, datum okay so projection is this and in the next step you will select the rational polynomial coefficient okay so the two files for rpc data will be given in your folder okay so whatever data you have so you will have these two files along with that data so rational polynomial coefficient is called rpc okay so in this case you have to select your rpc dot or rpc underscore org okay not this one this is rpc dot text so similarly in this uh, step also you will select first for your forward then press open then for the after word then press open so then there will be a window like this okay which will ask you so source uh, you will have to tell here source of stereo gcps gcps means ground control points so here you have three options after selection of the uh, rpc uh, in format images so then you uh, you have three options either you select no gcps or define gcps interactively or read gcps from files so in all the three ways most probably you will not get the accurate points on your both the images the forward and after images okay so because this is automatically done by uh, this software so this is the reason you have to manually select points on your image and you have to manually match those points on both the images so this is the uh, the concept behind this lab you can see the it, it is given like minimum elevation and maximum elevation which is uh, this information has been read by the software and it is giving for this particular data so moving ahead you suppose you are selecting it uh, generate tie points automatically so automatically means the tie points which are which you are having on both the images like you have selected the intersection of the roads okay as a point as a tie point on first image and the same you point you have to select on the other image also which is on your right hand side so those points are called tie points because these are have to be matched properly okay and this is done manually because 
it will not give us the automated uh, corrected tie points so we have to do it manually so now moving ahead now when you select it it will automatically process this tie points and will give you it on the images so likewise these are your forward and after images and here you can see that uh, this is your a band a image this is your band f image and this is actually the complete image and this part th there is a uh, square on this image which is showing the zoom up part of this image okay and this square is showing the zoom up part of this area okay so this area is zoomed up here in this window zoom one and zoom two window is for this image the after image okay so as you can see here this software has automatically detected uh, 1 to 25 points so total number of points on your image is 25 and it is giving also the reading for left x right x left y right y okay so these are some coordinates stereo image coordinates so here you can see and the important thing is that the points which are located on this image the corresponding 25 points will also be located on this image okay so but what happens the positioning of those points is not correct this you have to do manually in this exercise and the the result of this uh, effect is the maximum y parallax okay so here also uh, in these terms you can uh, understand it easily that the 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 point of observation is different for both the images <coughs> and that has been resulted into this effect of parallax so here the acceptable parallax is 0 to 1 but you can see here this it is showing like 89.8808 so this is not acceptable to uh, to generate a dam or uh, an agglyph okay so that will give you wrong data okay wrong interpretation of this area so you have to manually correct it so what is done actually you can see these points one by one like this is on the software when you click on this arrow these two arrows okay when you click on this so this is giving you point 1 so then 2 of 25 3 of 25 like this okay so here you can see you have to do corrections to minimize this parallax okay you have to uh, you have to mention this uh, parallax between 0 to 1 okay by correcting of these points and as number of uh, points you can select on the image so more number of points matched on the image images more corrections more accuracy and more precision in your dem or anaglyph you will have okay so let us move ahead so by having this suppose we are having point number one here and point number one here on this image okay and here you can see point number two point number three okay so if you see in the zoom apart so uh, you can see that here a road is going like this okay and but the point the accuracy of these points okay is not much because it is giving like so in this part you can see the point both the point okay point one here and point one here on this image is almost located okay at uh, same positions so the positioning of these points are a uh, little bit accepted to us because you can see the maximum y parallax is given here as 0 0.7577 so it is acceptable because should be within the range of 0 to 1 
okay now similarly you are having lots of points distributed all over the image okay because we need more points to correct this image okay to 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 get corrected digital digital elevation model as well as an aglyph okay so in this process we will have both the things as an outcome to our exercise so now because it is acceptable you have to do same for all the points when all the points are having this parallax between 0 to 1 so that is a stage when you can accept those points and you can move ahead by clicking next okay so then you will have this suppose we have done the correction the manual correction for all the points suppose we are having hundreds of points on the image and remember your point should be spread on on all over the images because if you are having concentration of points at one corner or two three corners but not having enough points on the other one other side so then it will not give the correct data generation okay so remember you have uniformly distributed points over your image so in this wizard you can see now we have accepted because we are having corrected points manually so we can move ahead by clicking next so then in that in this stage you you have first have to generate left epipolar image and right epipolar image okay epipolar image means because they are uh, in two they will be in two different colors uh, because you are having this uh, anaglyph glass with you so they will also be in two different colors in the same colors okay so you have to give some output folder for generation of these foils for left epipolar image and right epipolar image okay and then th these are some uh, default by default information so you don't need to uh, rectify any of this you just click next at this stage and you will get to see this much of information terrain relief terrain detail okay the edge trimming but uh, you should not change anything here because it is it has been set as default by the software and it is it has been taken correctly so just uh, dem because here you have to create your dem okay so you have to give a name for your dem in the next window so suppose you have selected your dem and output result you can select a file okay and then you can take a folder where your dem should be because this is the dem extraction wizard okay so this i will show you in the software the idea how to uh, set an output folder for this dem now click on next when you will click click on next on this wizard you will have the these four processing windows one by one first it will create the left epipolar image by by linear resampling method then it will create right epipolar image again by by linear resampling method then it will build a parallax image okay so here are some factors given for that and then finally it will geocode your dam okay so here in this wizard you will see that here is geocoding dam so the method used is triangulation method so suppose we are having three points on the image one two three so it will have the method of the section or so for to create the to get the coordinates of other points which are interpolated in between these three points okay so this is done with the method of triangulation so then after the processing you will get this window for uh, digital elevation model this window will be auto automatically open in our software ok and you can see here it has uh, uh, it is showing some some streams like this ok 
and this is a main stream called trunk, trunk stream which you learned in your uh, uh, geomorphology fluvial geomorphology lectures okay so this area is having a drainage pattern and tributaries are coming and joining the main trunk stream in this manner because the slope is the higher slope is in this region and this part defines the lower elevation or the planar area so always rivers originated at a higher elevation like in in indian case like him in himalayas so then they move through the slopes okay the topographic slopes and then they will join they generally joins the trunk stream or the main river channel okay like kosi and other rivers are coming and joining the ganga main stream of the okay so here you can see this much of data you have generated available band list okay so one is elevation data and other is right epipolar image and left epipolar image so you can read your uh, digital elevation model from here and now for anaglyph you have to go uh, and again with the options of topographic analysis then you have to select dam extraction and then you have to select epipolar 3d cursor okay because anaglyph are generated in two form of images like left epipolar and right epipolar so you have to manually select it from the folders in which you have kept it kept your files okay your files are saved in the folder so now moving ahead this window will be opened and now you have to select from this draw down list open new file first you have to select the left epipolar image click open then you have to select right epipolar image click open okay in the same manner and then you will get your both the images on the left side panel like left epipolar and right epipolar image so now you have to select it one, uh, one by one and then press okay okay you, so you have to click this if you click this there will not be anything okay so because these are your resulted epipolar images when you click okay first select right and left then you will have this window okay so this will give you the anaglyph of your area you can see here it is showing two colors the area in two colors like the same reddish and bluish color okay which you have on your this anaglyph class so when you see this area through this with the help of this glass okay by wearing this glass you will have a correct depth perception of this area because now you will be able to see the 3d vision of these two photographs okay so this is the magic of anaglyph here you are having some information for your generated anaglyph and on the next window this is your anaglyph so we know that uh, you don't have uh, this these materials with you like software and this data so what you can do you can see this image on your videos also you can pause your video here and you can wear the this anaglyph glass and then you can see this image okay so when you see you will also have the same depth perception what we have by having the hard copies of this with us okay so there is no difference you can also see in your videos okay so just you have to buy this anaglyph class you can get it from anywhere from online shopping also you can get it okay, so now we are going to move with our uh, practical okay by using the software first you have to select the nv 4.4 4.7 version from here 
these are some supporting software panels for NB. From here, what you can do first, you can select your image file, okay. Your image file, we have given a folder, okay. If you see it in a zoom, you can, we have placed the folder on desktop, name that it as and we work. So, in this folder, we are having our images. In this product one folder. Okay. So, what we did? We first click on file, then open image file, then we will select our folder from desktop or any. Uh, drive where we have saved it. So, we have saved it in NB work. Open it, then double click on your product or any folder which contains your forward and afterward images. Okay. So, what I explained? First, you have to select your forward image, then click on open it, then again so, this will be a there will be a panel which is showing that you have selected this band F file. So, this is the band for that. So, then again you have to click on file, open image file. So, now you have to select the afterward image, okay. click on open. So, now you can see in this panel first only band 1 for forward image was showing and now band 1 for both the images are showing here for forward and afterward. So, now you have to go with this option topographic file. Okay. So, in the PPT I explained that you can do it from both with both the options like you can go here then you can select your files by this clicking new and you can also select your file by clicking open image file. Okay. So, let us move ahead we, because we have already selected our forward and afterward images. So, now we will go in the topographic option. So, in topography we will find dam extraction wizard. In this wizard we have to click new because we want to uh, generate a digital elevation model from here. Okay. So, we have to go with this wizard them extraction wizard. Click on new. Here let us take it here so that you can see it more clearly. Let us see we can zoom it or not. Okay. So, from here you have to select your both the images because it is requiring stereo image pair okay, what you have selected here. So, click on stereo image uh, select stereo images okay when you click here it will give you the same images okay so first you will select forward then click on open then it is saying like this okay select right stereo pair first it was saying select left stereo pair so, you selected your F, then now it is saying that right, select right stereo image. So, now you will select your for A, band A, ok. Click on ok. So, now it is what it is saying, it will guide you, this software will guide you automatically uh, what to do next. So, select file containing RPC coefficients. Okay, so, we have placed the RPC coefficients in the same folder that is A and B work and B work. So, first in the same manner we have to select RPC underscore ORG okay, for F open then it is saying select file containing RPC coefficient again. So, it, it means that it needs 
the after RPC. RPC for the band A underscore R. Okay. Please uh, remember to select RPC underscore ORG, not this one because this is a text document. Uh, open. Okay. Now you have selected both the images, left image and right image. So now you have to click next. So are you able to see these options? Okay. You can see it by zooming your video. No, uh, so the there there is option for source of stereo GCPs. So GCPs means ground control points. So ground control points <coughs> we can give only when we have some GCPs by visiting the that area or or some uh, doing some field work and collecting some ground points. Okay. So, but we have in case uh, because when we need them for a large area, it is not possible to go uh, everywhere and collect the ground set points. So, for large area, we will select it automatically or uh, first we will do it automatically, then we can select the tie points manually within the software. So let us move, no GCPs because we do not have GCPs here, okay. So click on next simply. So then it will ask you source of tie points, okay. So whether you have your own tie points or you want to select it manually. So let us say we want to check what is the factor of app parallax with tie points generated automatically, okay. So click on the generate tie points automatically and it will process both the images and here you can see. So we can zoom these image also. Okay. So at this stage the image is shown like this okay. because we are in the process of creation of anaglyph. Now take it back, back again. So this is the complete image. You if you see here, okay, this window. This is the complete image, and these are the distribution of points on this image. Okay. So let's see how many points it has selected. Generally, it selects around 25 points, and this is the zoom window of this one, this large image because this is this is covering the complete area and this image, this image is, com, uh, is covering this area, this is square, okay. You can see a, a rectangle on this image, okay. Uh, this window covered in the rectangle shaped box is shown here in the form of this large image and the part of this large image a little part of this large image like here is covered by a small square so this square is showing in form of this window okay as you can see there is a road okay and it is covered under this square and and same is shown here also so same is with the other image. Let us let let us take it back again. So same for this image. This for the forward and this for the, the afterward. Okay. So we have we uh, we have to have these two images for generation of the digital elevation model. Okay. Similarly, you can see that there are uh, the 25 points here. It is mentioned. 25 points current tie points 21 of 25 so but it is showing at this stage only point number 1 okay. if you see let us now zoom this image okay. so at this stage it is showing 
point number 1 on here ok. So, this is the tie point remember this is not the GCP ok because we do not have GCPs with us. So, let us say what is the parallax for this point. So, if you see you can see the value of par the, the, the y parallax maximum y parallax is 66.8733 which is not acceptable ok what I have explained only acceptable value will lie within the range of 0 to 1 ok. So, let us say for some other point this is point 2 ok. So, you can see that this point is placed in between the river because this this white patch it is a river flood plain ok in white color because the sand reflects most of the light ok because it is of uh, light color and the darker objects absorb more light ok. So, this is the sand the fresh sand of a river channel. So, this may be a bread bar or a flood plain part of a river. So, you can see that point number 2 on this image on the left image is lying on in between the flood plain part, but in this image in the after image it is out ok outward placed from the flood plain area. So, that is why an error in this parallax is a great uh, value for this parallax is shown here ok. So, this is the reason similarly other points also will have some kind of uh, orientation distortion and or you can say the, the, the referencing of the points is not correct on these images ok. So, you can similarly you can see one by one for all the tie points. So, this was for, for point 2, this is point 3, this is 4, this is 5. So, these are the corresponding points ok. So, like if I am saying point 5 of 25 it means that point 5 on the first image corresponds to point 5 of the second image. The position point 5 tries to uh, show here is the same ok, but it is not geographically corrected. So, this is what we have to do manually in this exercise. Similarly, you can see for other points 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25 again 1 ok. So, what we have to do because we know that these points are not corrected. So, what we can do either we can select one by one all the points like point 1 and then first rectify point number 1 on both the images then we can rectify uh, point 2, point 3. So, if we are going to uh, do this kind of thing so then first better to show to click on show table because this table will show you the maximum number of error shown by all the points ok. So, the, this table will show you the error as you can see it is showing error by rank wise ok. So, point number 1 have the maximum error by rank then similarly for other points there is parameters x, y, x, y for left image for right image ok. So, this you can see by clicking on the table for so height table. So, if you are going to do this exercise then you what you have to do first you have to concentrate on the left image ok. On this image you have to 
zoom this part okay and place your cursor anywhere you can place it okay so where you place it the intersection will fix at this at that location okay so so the present location of the point is this shown by red color so we have to look whether this point number 1 is located correctly or not so what we can do is we can take we can increase the size of our window so that we can see it clearly okay so then you should actually select a point which is present at a location which you can mark very accurately like intersection of the roads okay joining of rivers or some higher peaks okay so any kind of landmark points okay so you have you go for that only so this is to recommend you like we have to select we should select point like this so in this zoom window you can see this point is lying here okay so suppose we are putting it here on this image and also on the left image we are putting it here there is some dot okay so we can put it correctly on this dot so suppose we want to add this point because we know that this point is corrected so suppose we want to add this point so we can add we can click on add okay or update because this point is already present if we are going with point number 1 if we want to correct point number 1 then we have to click on update so it will automatically update point number 1 so if we want to add some more points okay other than already existed 25 points then we can click on add okay so let's say we want to update it let's pick up any other point let's say point number 2 okay so we can see here on both the images that this the channel is having some sand some greenish island okay greenish in terms because we know that a river has a sand island and on sand island there is some type of vegetation so in in that term i am saying it some greenish island okay so you can see it on the color images but not on this because these are the the panchromatic data so now you can see that this notch is very clearly visible on both the images okay so this is this has the significance in selecting a point over here so suppose we want to select a point over here so first we directly put our this large this square box here because so that we can directly reach in the zoom window okay so you have to first select this part so from then you can easily select the the pin point of this meeting area in that case you can select the point the exact point of this meeting area okay this meeting point similarly you can select it on the left image so for left image the zoom box is this okay this is for the right image so suppose we are having we are taking our box here and then we can easily pinpoint our cursor here and the cross here we can put exactly on this meeting point so what we can do because we want to select this point because we know that it will have some accuracy and will be helpful in creation of the dam so we will add this point 
okay so you can see now there is number 27 now it is showing number 27 so the, uh, the first find what we added was becomes the point, point number 26 okay and this point what we have added has become point number 27 similarly we can add number of points so it is a lengthy exercise so at this stage we just uh, go ahead with the already corrected points okay the point data which we have with us uh, that is corrected so for that purpose what we have to do first we should delete all the points present on our image okay so we have this image so let it keep in the mid side because that will be easy for you to understand so this is one image this is another image so we are having now 27 points on both the images but at this stage we want to go directly with the dem creation because this way we will take a lot many hours to select the corrected points then process them so first you have to delete all the point by clicking it delete all so it will ask you all existing points will be deleted are you sure you want to do this yes okay so now we are having a points file with us so you can also select it you can select that point file by this option restore okay so click on restore and go in the same folder because we were working in this folder and we work okay so you can select it and this file as you can see here 26.pts these, these are the point files so these points we know that these are the corrected points which we have created earlier so click it and open it so it will show all these 26 points distributed all over the image you can see here also and you can see on this image on this image and on after image forward and after you can see uh, these 26 points on both the images so now you know that these are the corrected points and why how to check whether these are the uh, most of the points are corrected or not you can see your maximum y parallax here so it has converted into 0 0.9203 this is little what accepted to us because it is lying between 0 and 1 it is very difficult to reach uh, to to take this factor near to 0 but yes you can do it by taking your time and correcting these points up to the extent what you can do okay so now you can see that all the points are displayed here you can click on next you can see all the table also so then click on okay so now we can move ahead by clicking next now it will ask you so give a name for left epipolar image and right epipolar image okay so you have to select here the directories where you want to keep your generated files so suppose we first select the output image file name for left epipolar image choose you can go again in the same folder and we work okay and you can give it name bad f left epipolar image because this is for left epipolar image we can give it name as band f left epipolar image and just click here because it just needs a folder so what you can do you can create a new folder which you can give name anaglyph okay so you want to save your anaglyph images in this folder click on this 
okay, already a name is given click open then choose file name for write epipolar image click on choose again go to nv work folder click on anaglyph where you want to save it so the name is given band a write epipolar image okay click on open now you have given names for your right and left epipolar image just click on next now it will ask you for output projection and map event extent output projection and map extent so these are the default parameters you don't need to disturb any of this because this is automatically uh, set by default from by the software okay and the projection is utm zone is 4 4 44 zone north and the datum used is wgs 84 so because these are the uh, uh, the cartoon set one data so the, this information is already set with our data okay so click on next so dem result so it is asking for a dem file file name for your dem so you suppose you are going to uh, you have already given names for the uh, anaglyph images now it is asking for the name for the dem image so dem extraction parameters are this you don't need to change it also don't need to change anything you just click on file and output dem file name you can choose it from here and you can click on the, your, your folder nv work okay so create another folder which you can name it as dem because you are going to put your dem image in this and give a name for this image dem trial or any name suppose what in your the name of your area is Garwal region you can give it dem for Garwal region ok uh, click on open then click on next so now you can see you will find those four wizards one by one first it is creating left epipolar image by by linear resampling method ok so first it will process the the left image which is your forward image then it will process your right image you can see creating right epipolar image by the same method that is bilinear resampling if you see it in, in zoom so you will be able to see that it is saying like this it has already created the left epipolar image it has created this and now it is building your parallax the parallax what we have got in our last steps okay which is acceptable to us that was 0 0.92 something okay so now <coughs> after taking all the parameters into consideration and the uh, and uh, and all the points the the 26 points which we have already created and we set in the software ok and so those points will be automatically calculated with the method of triangulation and after that it will create the points remaining in between the areas which are not covered on the image ok so suppose we have created point number 1, 2, 3, 4 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 like this. So, suppose we are not having any data in between point 1 and point 6. So, it will automatically create the data by interpolation, this method, okay, triangulation. So, now after doing all this exercise, it is it is doing the geocoding dam, okay, by triangulation method. So, now at this stage, you will see your dem here dem results examine dem result load dem result to display you can see the dem for those two images 
has been created and shown like this. So you can see here that the streams are joining the main river channel. Okay, so this is the main river, okay, also called trunk stream in form of river fluvial geomorphology. So this is trunk stream. This you you must have learned in your uh, geomorphology lectures. Okay, so the rivers are join, uh, coming from the higher elevation and moving through slopes and through slope they are joining the main stream or the trunk stream. So the, the dam you can extract number of information from your dam like you want to profile you want to get a profile from here to here you can uh, put this uh, dam file uh, in global mapper or any uh, uh, type of software which are dealing with uh, such exercises. So, you can put your you can open this file in global mapper and you can do profiling, mapping and etcetera. You can extract number of information with the help of this digital elevation model. Okay. So, you will have the more number of points distributed over the image, the more accuracy and the more resolution you will get on your resulted DEM. Okay. Because we are having the points distributed like this. Okay. So, the resolution of this image is not uh, very good, but of course, we are able to uh, uh, see all the drainage system, but we can not uh, determine the features which are present located in between some few meters, a few meters. Okay. So, for that we have to uh, create more number of points for a high resolution dim. Now, we have to look for our anaglyph image, okay, what we have generated through this exercise. So, that you have to open with this wizard as I have shown you. So, now for viewing our anaglyph resulted from this exercise, we have to again go with our topographic option. Okay. Dem is automatically generated and you can display it from here. Load DEM result to display, but for anaglyph, you have to display your anaglyph result, your left and right epipolar images with this option. Go to topographic option, then dem extraction, then go to epipolar 3D cursor. So, if you see it in zoom you can see the options here okay so i am zooming it so that you can see the options listed over here so you can go in topographic option then dem extraction then then you can select epipolar 3d cursor okay click on this so then it will ask you to select left epipolar image First, it will ask you select left epipolar image. So, where is your left? This. Okay. So, here all the results are uh, displayed, but you have to select only left epipolar image. So, this is your left epipolar image. Just click on this and click OK. Then it will say, it will say select right epipolar image. Here is your right epipolar image. Click on it and click on OK. Finally, you will have your anaglyph in front of you. Okay. So, enjoy your anaglyph with uh, 3D anaglyph glass. Okay. As you can see, this is uh, a zoom up part. This is a zoom up part like in the earlier wizard. You, you see that this large image is a zoom up part of the rectangle shown over here on the full image. And this 
zoom part is a coverage of this square okay which is placed here over this image so for viewing complete uh, the the full image uh, you can zoom here okay you can maximize it so first let me tell you uh, what information you are having here you can see all the relief of the ground you can observe the uh, the features the landforms okay and uh, you can use this map uh, for number of purpose like uh, you want to uh, do some mapping some kind of mapping over there okay if you want to extract some information about the objects if you want to have an, an engineering project in this area or if you want to do land use uh, analysis for this area okay so you can understand all the patterns in this region and then you can so now let us again minimize it and zoom the full image so this is our full image let us take it in the middle yes okay so this so when we wear this uh, these kind of uh, anaglyph glass we can see this image in 3d okay remember you have to wear it you can uh, uh, buy it from anywhere so you when you wear it you will see this image directly okay and you will be able to see this terrain in 3d okay so now I am having a depth perception. Okay, what I am seeing. So, yeah, one thing you you have to remember. So when uh, when you first display your anaglyph, there may be not a correct representation of the ground because sometimes what happen your uh, right image and left image are swapped. Okay, so due to which what happens your reverse you will uh, your rivers you will find on the surface and the hills you will find on the depressions so there will be a negative depth perception the so the higher elevations will be shown as a lower elevations and lower elevations as a higher elevations so what you will do is a simple method you just minimize it and take this wizard okay in which you have created your image okay and then you just click on this option are you able to see it okay so you just click it swap left right in display okay so this will display the this swap em swapped images like left will become the right and right will become the left okay so if the pattern is uh, not corrected all early, uh, already so it will be corrected by this so now if you see now we have done it yeah so now uh, let us again display our image okay yeah let us again try to see it through this glass yeah so now it is having a correct depth perception okay so now i am able to see that the reverse are flowing in between the ridges so here is a ridge another ridge on the other side these are the hilly areas okay having steep slopes and these patches like this one and this one and this one these are the higher elevation means the the ridge, ridges areas okay so these are the higher elevations and rivers are coming from here and you can see the tributaries are matching with the main river trunk stream and here you can see a planar area planar ground okay so where there is no relief changes so this area is used for the settlements or urbanization by the people okay so the river is flowing and coming from the higher elevation and going towards the lo lower elevation what happens in nature in, in nature also okay 
So when you look this image with this anaglyph glass, you will be having a correct perception and uh, you are looking through a video. Okay. So I hope you may be able to see this uh, area in 3D okay? because uh, you must be looking uh, through these two lenses and, uh, and you will have uh, a depth perception like uh, you will see uh, uh, this river at a lower elevation and you can see the ridges at a higher elevation okay and it in between the two ridges on both the sides this river is flowing from higher elevation higher ground to lower ground so suppose if i am moving my glass here you can see this river is originated at a higher elevation and now it is moving through slope and going like this and meeting the planes the plane area okay and you will enjoy your anaglyph that as you are flying over this terrain okay so likewise in in case of uh, stereoscope we have the depth perception by having two images in this case we are having only a single image which is made up of made up from two different images left and right forward and after so but we are having a single image of anaglyph okay and we can have the same kind of depth perception as we have under a stereoscope by having a stereo pair okay so hope you have learned a lot in this exercise and and uh, so probably uh, this may be your last exercise so uh, thank you very much for your kind attention and hope to see you again thanks